We want to we want to do some introduction to the land of Israel. Um, the story of Israel, location, location, location. If you look over here, this is Israel. This right here, and this is Arabia. This is Egypt. This is Iran, Syria. You can also see it right over here. Israel is a narrow strip between the sea on one side and the desert on the other side. And it's located between three continents. It's a land bridge between three continents. You have Europe, Asia, and Africa. Basically, in the ancient times, or until 200 years ago, everybody who wanted to go from Asia to Africa or from Europe to Africa had to, to come through Israel. It's the only land bridge. The Mediterranean Sea, it's not safe to sail in the winter time. Even in the summertime, it's not easy. And here, the largest sand dune desert in the world, Arabia, impossible to cross. So everybody came through Israel. That's why all the powers in the history always wanted to conquer this vital crossroad, the land bridge between those three continents. So far, so good? Mm -hmm. <laughs> By the way, biblical days, beginning of mankind's civilization, the Tower of Babylon, <coughs> Babel, yes, mm -hmm. the gate to heaven, mm -hmm. Babylonia. Babel Jana, they call it. Uh, right here, that's where Abraham came from. <coughs> That's where the first, uh, the beginning of mankind's civilization, that's where the first animals been domesticated, that's where the first plants been domesticated, the first cities, invention of the wheel, invention of the hand right, the first organized armies, the first organized religions. All this started right here at Mesopotamia by the Tigris and the Euphrates, by the great rivers. Egypt became the second power of the ancient world. Egypt adopted the plants, the animals from Mesopotamia and by the river Nile became the second power of the ancient world. The land of Canaan right over here is in the middle between Mesopotamia and Egypt, the two centers of the ancient world. So in the ancient times, if you want to cross from Mesopotamia to Egypt, you have to go through Israel. And this road is called the way of the sea. So later, today and tomorrow, we're going to talk more about those international highways of the ancient world. Another thing I want to tell you about Israel, let me see if I can take this map from the wall. <clears throat> This is the biblical land of Israel, or the biblical land of Israel. Okay, when we travel, we are visiting the modern state of Israel. But we are, we want to study the Bible. So we want to talk about the biblical land of Israel. The state of Israel today is very small, the size of New Jersey. 8,500 square miles, that's it. Biblical Israel include Judea and Samaria, of course small portion of Lebanon, big portion of Syria, big chunk of Jordan, all that roughly, the biblical land of Israel. You can see it in the map in the back of your Bibles. And the land of Israel, maybe something about the topography. You remember your tectonic, uh, the tectonic plate theory? Yes. Back from your high school days? Our world the planet is like crust tectonic plates so we are on the southern we are on the eastern side of sorry on the western side of asia not the middle east 
Okay, open brackets for a moment. Middle East, when you are in London or in Paris and you look at the map, you have the Far East, the Middle East, and the closest. That's why they call us the Middle East. Mm. But this is a very modern term. We're actually on the west side of Asia. We're part of the Asia continent. Now, if you look over here, you see this? That's what we're gonna do today. This is called the Dead Sea Valley or the Dead Sea Transform. It's a geological fault separating between two different tectonic plates. That's why we have so much earthquakes over here. We're gonna talk about this as well. This is the Arabian plate and this is the Sinai plate and they keep moving. So we have a lot of earthquakes. And the most dominant nature phenomenon in the land of Israel, you can feel it very soon with your fingers, is the Dead Sea Transform. From the north all the way to the south, can you see that? You have the valley. From the north, all the way to the south, you have valley. Now, if you look on both sides of it, of the rift, you have ridge of mountains. After visiting America, you're probably gonna call those hills. The average height, the mountains that you see over there, outside your window, one, uh, um, 3,000 feet. So you have the Transjordanian, or the east ridge of mountains, from the north all the way to the south and then you have the valley you have the mountains over here on the west side of the Jordan River and then you have the coastline so the Israeli topography is very easy to remember you have the mountains valley mountains coastline coastline mountains valley mountains now it's your turn. Mm -hmm. and mountains, <laughs> mountains, valley, mountains, coastline. Coastline, mountains, valley, mountains. This is it. You know it all. <laughs> the whole topography of Israel. Uh, since you are still awake and we're still waiting for our camels, uh, I want to tell you something about uh, the beautiful uh, uh, character of the land. One of the characteristics of the land of Israel is the incredible diversity. Okay, and I'm talking about uh, um, cultures, like human cultures, but also fauna and flora. Because the topography I just described, and because we are between three different continents, we have incredible diversity in the land of Israel. Just for example, we have more uh, animal species than all of England and half of Europe. Mm -hmm. It's a world record for the largest amount of animal species per area. We're talking about more than 600 different types of birds. Yes, uh, 127 mammals in, this, in a country in the size of New Jersey. Okay, it's incredible world record. So the reason for that is the topography and because we are between three continents. You need to understand that right now you're in a desert, yes? And we can take you to see the desert, 66% of our country. But if you tomorrow we are going to Mount Hermon, you can do Ski right now, incredible year for ski. Yes, incredible ski resort on Mount Hermon. Here, the Galilee, incredible forest area. Here, marshes and swamps, sand dunes. And if you drive here, the lowest place in the world. And if you continue drive over here, you can see the northest tropical coral reef in the whole world. Hmm. So you can do, go and do scuba diving, whale sharks, Coral reef. So, tropical coral reef over here, and five hours drive to the north, you can enjoy ski resort and deserts and sand dunes and marshes, all this in a country the size of New Jersey. Some of the best scuba diving coral in the world. Mm -hmm. Like, unbelievable. And that's true also for uh, for the fauna. What day are we doing that? <laughs> <laughs> you, need to come, you need to come one more time to Israel to organize this as well, seriously. <laughs> Uh, uh, goes also for the fauna and for the human cultures. Tomorrow we're going to speak about the Galilee of the nations, okay? So the topography over here allowed different cultures living together. That's the way it was in the Old Testament time, the New Testament time, and today. And I'm, I'm about to shut up. Uh, but in the Old Testament time, you have the, uh, the Syrian, the Arameans, the, the, the Phoenicians, the, the, uh, the Edomites, the Moabites, the Amalekites, the Midianites. 
okay, the Philistines, the, the, the Israeli kingdom, the Judean kingdom, the Samaritans, all that in a small country. Different cultures can live one by beside of the other. And the same in the New Testament. Yes, remember the Galilee of the Gentiles? So you have the Decapolis, yes, you have the Syrians, you have the, uh, uh, you have the Canaanites and others, and the same today. We have diversity of cultures in the land of Israel. Uh, what I wanted to do, or if you feel like, um, we have some pamphlets and some maps to show you. If you want to take the next 10 minutes to visit this really nice small store over here, you can do it as well. And the moment the camel people will be here, we go on the camels. It smells like camel in here. <laughs> That's what we're eating. What? Is that for what the, bed, the barbecue? That's what Bedouins ate. Whenever they got a camel. Whenever a camel got sick. That's what he did. Pickle pig spader big oh, in St. Louis. So why wouldn't they be big? Yeah. <laughs>